So since we did our trailer show, uh, there been a couple more trailers that we've noticed popping up, and we're going to talk about one of them. Have you seen this trailer for this movie, The Star? I have. It's an animated, sure to be a classic. <laughs> it's not what I thought it was going to be. I thought, you know, the star. I kind of thought, you know, along the line of the star is born. No, no, no. This is a, an animated film featuring funny, wacky, talking animals on their way to witness the birth of Christ. It's basically what it's lauding itself as is the Christmas story told from the point of view of the donkey. <laughs> And some camels. Oh, no, there's camels, there's birds, there's... And I think the camels, I think those are the wise men's camels, so they're coming from opposite directions, and, so they have their, like, their own the story. Wise men. When I first saw it, I will be honest with you, my jaw dropped, <laughs> and I may have stopped breathing really? while it was on. Oh. I didn't know how to react. Because you say, well, okay, it's a children's... Uh -huh. version of the Christmas story sure. from the New Testament of the Bible. Uh -huh. And it's camels and donkeys and wacky hijinks on their adventures. <laughs> and a sheep. There's a sheep in and there. And a sheep. <laughs> you know, I, I I didn't care for it. And I, I, I felt like it was maybe a little insulting. It's got like 8,000 famous voices in it. Yeah, Tyler I mean, Perry and Oprah Winfrey among them. Oh my them. gosh, Zachary Levi, I mean Keegan Michael Key. I mean it's got some really good voices uh -huh. in it. But of course that's easy. We know that. You sure. can sit around in your jeans and do the voiceovers and then just go <laughs> cash your check. It's not a big deal. Your face isn't in it. It just the preview makes it look not good. Well, I don't, you know, it, it looked wacky and funny and it hit all those buttons. The subject matter did give me a little bit of pause. I wasn't, I wasn't deeply disturbed by it. I was just mostly rolling my eyes. Well, part of my problem is that, is that historians and, and many, 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 many mm. clerics have agreed that the wise men, it took them about two years to find Jesus. Oh yeah, but that's not what you hear. No, that's. I mean, your know, your nativity at services set and your nativity you scenes just have them arriving the next at day. Bed Bath and Beyond has everybody. <laughs> I get that, but I it's and I know it's not a documentary, but oh, far from it. I just didn't. I just felt funny after it. Yeah, I mean, after I saw it, I, I called you and I said, "Look, Stacy, I'm an atheist and I'm offended by this." Yeah, enough said. When the chaos of popular culture makes your brain hurt, you really need belief in the form of a transfusion of analysis and humor. It's time for a poperation. Join hosts Eric and Stacy as they dissect popular culture one bloody organ at a time. It's just what the doctor ordered. Well, Merry Christmas, Stacy. Well, almost. Okay, it's now time to say that. I can say that now. Because it's not Hallow fucking Week, <laughs> which is when everybody started putting their Well, you know, in. or back to school, as we said before. Oh, my God. I'm so mad. <laughs> Buy your pencils so and pens and mistletoe uh, right here in the same store. I swear to God. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. But, you know, but, okay, but I, I'm like you. I'm very protective um, of those, um, you know, of this, this particular time of year because I love it and I don't want to get sick of it. Correct. So, so but I, but it, I don't want to get sick of it because I love it. Like it's just, so I used to have this coworker who would start playing Christmas music in the beginning of October. Mm -mm. And I was like, no, no, not. And I, I, I was unreasonably upset about this. This just wasn't time, but I will tell you day after Thanksgiving, all of my playlists switch over to my Christmas plays. It's all I listen to until January 2nd. It's all I hear. So I love it, love it, love it. I just only want it in this little cocoon okay. of time. Here's what I want to say. First of all, you were not unreasonably upset. <laughs> if it starts in October, that's three damn months. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's ridiculous. So mm -hmm. that was not unreasonableness. <laughs> Second, uh, wow. Here's my thing. I can't really listen to it on the 26th of December. Oh, really? I, I can't do Christmas after that. 
I can do Let It Snow. There's some non anything that does that's just about snow. About I can winter, do a little bit. Okay? Which all those wintertime songs I wrap up into Christmas music as well. well I, I do yeah. too to an extent, but at the but I will say once the twenty sixth comes around. I'm done with the Christmas music. Oh, uh, see, I, I extend my my Christmas vacation into New Year's, and then January second, it's over. It's a it's a new year. We're done. You put the Christmas music away. You bring out you know Lady Gaga once again, and we're <laughs> dancing to disco music in the car on the way to work. That's what you do. That's what you do. Okay. What you do? Has she ever made any? I don't think she. Ha- oh, oh you no, know, she, she did. did. She did. She had Tony that Thanksgiving Bennett. special. And, but she had an old album last year, Tony Bennett. No, I mean Christmas music because Lady Gaga had like all, a Christmas album. It was Christmas music. No, it's all like swing. It's all like standards and oh, stuff. Okay, I thought um, I had a bunch of Christmas. She did something. No. Did she do a duet with him? Have I lost my mind? Okay, she did a couple years back. She did a Thanksgiving special, and she sang a cup. And you can get it on like iTunes. I saw it. And there's a couple of Christmas songs she sang in there, mm-hmm. but then there's a couple of just jazz standards she sang in there too. She did a great cover of "Orange Colored Sky." I bet that if was you amazing. Google, you can find some oh yeah, Lady Gaga. Oh, I'm sure. Christmas. I'm sure. Um, I might need to add Lady Gaga to my Christmas playlist. This well, we, year. well, you know what? Here's what I think. In putting this together, I realized that. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's let's tell our people what this is. What did we put together for them this week? Did we say who we were? We said Merry Christmas, Stacy, and Merry Christmas, Eric. This is Popperation. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like we've been wassailing. Wassailing. <laughs> it's okay because it is the holiday season. Yes. So what we've done this week is we we hearkened back to a show that we did this summer, which was our ultimate summer playlist, which I had a great time putting together. And and as soon as we did it, I said we have to do this again in December. Mm-hmm. So this is the Popperation Ultimate Holiday playlist 2017 um mm-hmm. because you and i have both discussed there's a whole lot of music i could have put in here yep. that we didn't because we were limiting ourselves to 12 songs each so we've each picked our kind of here's where we'd want our playlist to start we've each picked a here's where we'd want our playlist to end and then 10 songs that go in the middle and we're going to give uh, all you nice folks a little teaser of each one of these songs and then also put the playlist out there on Spotify and Google yes. Play and iTunes and all those places. Yes. So if you want this playlist to listen to in the mm-hmm. car on the way to work in December to put yourself in the Christmas spirit, yes, you can do that. Yep. Yeah, it's totally going to be out there. And uh, he, yes, this is part one. Like we could do a whole nother one for the next five years. Yep. It would be completely different songs. Yep. But this is just kind of the first ones that we feel are iconic to ourselves mm-hmm. and that sort of thing. I really like the one that you started with, and I know it has a story and in, in, in for you. Yeah. But it's a really good way to start on Black Friday. <laughs> Have yourself a Merry little Christmas Let your heart be light Next year all our troubles will be out of sight So that's Judy Garland singing Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, which, by the way, is the only version of Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas that I listen to and that I think anyone should ever listen to, ever. Because there's a line that people switch. Yes, and I don't like it. So, in the middle of the song, um, she is saying, through the years we all will be together if the fates allow, right? Which already there she's saying, maybe we'll be together again and maybe we won't. Right? And then the next line is, until then, we'll have to muddle through somehow. Now, first of all, muddle through is such great lyrics. Like, how can you get rid of a great phrase like muddle through? But usually what people do when they sing the song out of context is they swap out those songs. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they sing, hang a shining star upon the highest bough. It's like, we were not talking about trimming a tree. This song is about something. And it's not about that. So why the hell are you... And they just don't want it to be depressing. I get it. But this song is about this thing. It's about this feeling. And not only does Judy Garland sing it perfectly, she acts it. Which is why, as an actor who likes... I like singers who act. 
I like actors who sing, actually. And, and when you find someone like Judy Garland or Barbara Streisand or somebody who also has an amazing voice, even better. But this is this is a story in a song, and it just takes me places. And, and it, if you don't know, it's from the uh, movie Meet Me in St. Louis. Mm-hmm. So great old classic movie, which is not a Christmas movie. No, it's not. It's not at all a Christmas movie. Movie, but it does have a lot of iconic songs in it. Aside yes. from this one, but we're not going to go into that. But this was this was huge. Yes, but it's a movie that spans a year of time, and of course, it has a Christmas sequence. I think it goes, uh, you know, summer, fall, winter, spring is the structure uh, of the movie, and so in the winter season. Of course, Judy Garland and her family are celebrating Christmas, and she sings this song in an attempt to cheer somebody up. So that's the thing. It's it's kind of funny because it's not a cheery song. Well, it is and it's not. To me, what it's about, and I think it's a song that really is about something, it's about taking these moments around the holidays where you're having a wonderful time and your family is around you and just cherishing them in the present moment and not trying to make it last and not worrying if you're never going to feel this perfect particular moment ever again just stop just appreciate what you have just kind of hold it close to you and then let it go and and there will be great times in the future maybe not exactly the same maybe a little different but also great and just you know just let it go just let all of that kind of st- stress go and what's funny is she's she's singing this to a a five-year-old child who just feels the weight of the world on her shoulders so that lightens it up a little bit too here's how i feel about this song and of course i i did not hear it first from this movie Uh uh-huh i because everybody and their dog and a lot of the one the songs that we have picked have been covered by yes. so many people and this is one of those because this is a classic uh-huh. so this is can... the original i've picked a lot of cover versions yes. on my list but this is the original of this particular song and as i say the only version you should ever listen to okay so here's my thing about this song is that i find the story for me not putting it into the context of meet me in st louis uh-huh. is that of Whatever the hell else is going on, have a Merry Christmas. Yes. That's it. This, you know, it, it's just whatever else we're going to be muddling through. You know, maybe we'll see each other. We don't mm-hmm. know. You know, but but let's have a Merry Christmas. And you know what? It may be little. Yeah. I think the word little is key to the whole message of the song. I don't right? think it was an accident but, no. that that was in there. And the very next line is, let your heart be light. And I think, again, there's, these lyrics have stuff to them. It's a, it's, a, it's a song we've heard so many times. It's easy Correct. just to kind of hum along to the melody and not really pay attention. But let your heart be light is basically like, that's your choice. Yep. You know, you can you can get crazy and you can mire yourself in adulting and, and you know, what a shit bag that can be. Or you can just say, you know what, it's Christmas. Lighten up. You know, so for me, while it's it's in the the melody can be a little sad, um, and the the mood of it is a little it's quieter and it's slower. Um, but to me, it's it always it raises my spirits, and you know, and it's Judy. So as a as a member of the internal international order of <laughs> big homosexuals, you know, Saint Judy sings. You listen. That's just what what you do. And I think I do think it's a great beginning song. I honestly don't think you want it to be your ending song for a playlist, but it's a great start. Yeah. There's actually quite a few songs in here. I'll be frank, and I added to this of songs that you don't want to be your ending song. <laughs> you don't want to end on that. <laughs> now, I'm going to go on a different little place here with my first song. Okay. I used to work in retail in a women's clothing store, uh-huh. and they had on one of those loops of Christmas music. Yep. And so I worked, like, for three years, I worked just the Christmas time. Okay. And so, you know, when I'm going in uh, before Black Friday, they've got this loop, this this tape on. Uh-huh. Going How on. many songs on the tape do you think? I'm going to say there were probably, sadly, 25 okay. to 40 All right. songs. So it's, a, it's, it's but hefty, but you hear those songs multiple the, times a day. In a five to six hour shift, you're hearing the whole tape probably four to five times. Okay. Okay. And this one... It just takes me right back there to folding clothes. Okay, let's not keep us in suspense. What's the song? It's Mariah Carey, All I Want for Christmas. All I want for Christmas is you. Now, a 
lot of people have done that song, but I think everyone will agree with me. See how I said that? Uh-huh. Everyone will <laughs> agree with me. And that's an order. That Mariah Carey sings it the best. Oh, yeah. Well, Mariah Carey's got one of those voices, right? I mean, technically, is just she can do things that other singers cannot do, and she does them in this particular song. Yes, I agree that she can, and, but I will also say there are some things I, I'm, I, that – some versions of songs that she's done that I'm like, oh, like somebody else. This one, I think, is hers and hers alone. Yeah. I've heard other people sing it, and I like it. But it's it's a – for me, it takes me back to that time. And, of course, it was the 90s. And uh-huh. it was just – again, we talk about – Christmas music uh-huh. takes us to these sentimental times, yep. since memory of going mm-hmm. to a certain place. And this is one of those that takes me to that place and it makes me happy. Yep. Again, I don't, you know, I'm, when Christmas is over, I don't listen to this anymore. <laughs> no. But I tell you what, so there are things about the holiday season that you and I do not like. Right. And yes. like shopping and capitalism are among those things. Now, it's interesting that this song takes you back to the mall. But again, you listen to the lyrics of this song and they're not that deep, but they're they're cute and they're clever. But basically they're saying, I don't need stuff. I need this guy, and you know, it's, and yeah. it's, it's a nice message. It's kind of a nice anti-commercialism message for the holidays correct and the beat and the tune and the dun 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 dun, dun at the beginning it's just like you you got to shake your butt when you're when when this comes I, on okay and, and and yes i'm gonna say yes you're right on all that but i also think i'm being really shallow in it eric i didn't analyze why i liked it you're like <laughs> and it's all about i just really want the person i don't give a fuck i just <laughs> you know what it's got a great beat and easy to dance to. I give it an 86. And if you got that <laughs> reference, we know how old you are. Uh, so anyway, I just, it's after Judy, let's start. We start with Judy and then we have Mariah. And you shake your fanny and a little good. bit. You're good and, to go and you're ready for the rest. And on we go into Christmas. So we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to get Stacy's first block of five on Poperation's Ultimate Holiday Playlist 2017. You're listening to Poperation with Eric and Stacy. Take a deep breath. This may sting a little. Okay, so we're back, and now we're really going to hit the nitty-gritty of the meat of this playlist. Let's get in there, Stacy. Now, see, you really, you over, you, you analyze, I almost said overanalyze, and that's not fair because have yourself a Merry Little Christmas deserved what, what the analyzation we gave it. Here's what I want to say. In looking at these choices that I've made, it seems like it does kind of harken back to your Judy Garland, let's all be sad for Christmas time. <laughs> it's not what I said, but okay. <laughs> that's, that's what I heard. <laughs> Anywho, so the this first section, they're kind of slow. Uh huh. They are sentimental. Okay. But they're also for me. I think they're all classics. Mm-hmm. And the people that I that I picked to sing them are are classics. Yes, this so, is music that that Stacy sips her cocoa and happy cries on the couch. These are oh my god! And we <laughs> talked about how I don't like crying, but I will tell you right now, this shit is real. So the first one took me by surprise when I first heard it. Okay. It's by Clay Aiken. Everybody sit down. Sit down. Keep listening. It's Clay Aiken. Of course, he was runner-up for American Idol Uh one time. Long ago. And I'm not a huge fan of his as far as his music. Yada, yada, yada. He always had a nice, clean voice. And that comes through on this song. It does. And here's what I also want to say, though. This is, it's kind of like a letter to... Mary, the mother of Jesus, and saying, you have this baby now, he's cute and everything, and you have no idea this boy has got a future. And it's a really interesting thing because I sometimes, um, I don't like going to this place where, as a mother, (laughs) but... (laughs) One, I mean, when I had kids, this kind of hit me in a different way as well, in mm-hmm. that you sit there and you look at this baby, or now I look at my teenagers, I don't know what their future is going to hold. Yeah. Now, Mary's kid, Jesus, you know, it was a bit of an up and down kind of ride for him. <laughs> 
and but this song kind of talks to that. So there's this, but there's this sentimentality of talking to the mother of um, who many perceive to be the Messiah. Mm-hmm. That's huge. Yeah, and it's it's it, here, but it's but this is just talking to the mom who just had a baby. Yeah, and so that is just a basic everyday kind of thing, and yet. I just think it's a very cool concept. I thought it was very well written. I thought it was a very cool concept. Mm-hmm. I, I, the, everything about it, it's a lovely song. Yeah. When Whether I listened you- to this song, um, when I when I was finding it uh, to to prep for this show, um, notice that Kenny Rogers and Winona Judd did this as a duet um, about five years before Clay Aiken okay. sang it. And then some some person whose name I can't remember, the, the first recording I could find was like sometime in the 80s. So it's been around for a little while, but I don't think it got really popular until Kenny and Winona did it. And then, like, oh my gosh, so many people have recorded the song in the last decade or so. Yes. And again, I never heard it. I did not hear Kenny and Winona, although I can hear in my head, I can, I can, I can kind of hear his voice singing this. Mm-hmm. This is kind of around his voice range. But yep. it's the clean, clear, Clay Aiken voice. Mm-hmm. This is the first... He's the first one I heard sing it, yeah, and that's where I stick. As far as that, that's that's what I I really like. So mm. here's a little bit of it. Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God, oh Mary. That's a yep. little, as I said, it's a little sentimental, and it's and again, there's some sadness there because, mm-hmm. as I said, Jesus, you know, a bit of a rough ending. Yeah. So keeping up with that, <laughs> and which here, a, you know what? Bit I of a realized, rough ending. <laughs> here's what I just realized, though. Here's what I just realized. Yes. So, so Clay sings to Mary, who just had a baby. Uh huh. So then, so Jesus's life happens, and we have that ending that happens there. No spoilers here. So this song could be what Mary sings after Jesus dies, which is, "Where are you, Christmas?" Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit of stretch. But this but let's is my go with it. Song. Keep it in. Keep it in. This is this is this is my next song, and it's. Um, and we're continuing the theme of people we discovered on reality TV shows, <laughs> uh, because Cassie Joy actually we we know her from The Voice, mm-hmm. and so she was on that show, and she sings this song. Now, where this are you, Christmas? Yes, yeah, this is not the only version. I think Faith Hill has a big one. Okay, and she does a lovely job, but she can belt. Mm-hmm. But. I like Cassie Joy's version. It's a little different. Mm-hmm. But, uh, and again, this is one of someone saying, where is Christmas? And it's a very 21st century yep. kind of feel in that, you know, the magic is gone. You know, I thought I was going to feel this way when I got to be older and yep. I'm not. This is not the life I thought. Where are you? In the end, there is an upswing and, they, mm-hmm. it, it, and it is hopeful at the yep. end. Well, she listened to Judy Garland is what happened, I think. That's the story I come up with. You can't see me, <laughs> but I'm just looking at him and blinking. <laughs> okay. We're moving As on. you were want to do. And so, but here's a little bit of, of this, a taste. Okay. Where are you, Christmas? Do you remember the one you used to know? I'm not the same world. I love that song. I just love I just love it. It's beautiful. Song. It's beautiful. I, you know, she's I, got I, a, and she's got a very lovely, clear, kind does. of clean voice as well. This is not an overproduced. No, and that's one reason I I like this version yeah. better than others. It is there is a little weird in that here's my only pickiness about it is mm-hmm. that so there's like where are you, where are you? And then oh, I mean it's a very quick yeah. turn around. So that's a little bit of a concern for mm-hmm. me, but I like the I like the music to it so much and all of that. So yeah, but you if know. you didn't turn around, you'd just be like, you know, oh no, it wouldn't be on my list. Yeah, because you'd take that shining star yeah. up the highest bow and just slit your wrist with it and be done. Now, <laughs> Merry Christmas. Uh, <laughs> that went dark. Well, we are dark. I'm still not out of the light. Exactly. Here we go. Let's keep going. Now, this one is actually traditional. This is what yes. if you uh, were grew up in a Christian church that would have music in its mm-hmm. services, this song 
all during December you sang this yeah. song. And it's a lovely song. It, it, and everybody and their dog has sung it. Holy infant so tender and mild Sleep in heavenly peace Sleep. Okay, that's beautiful. Okay, now did you... Did you know that they had recorded? Because I haven't told you who it is yet, but I know you know. But did you know that they had done this? No, I didn't know that these three women Mm -hmm. had come together to sing this particular song. Of course, it's Silent Night. That's no spoiler there. No. Um, every, every, as you as you are want to say, everyone and their dog has recorded it. I'd love to hear someone's dog. So back in the day, in the eighties, there was a country three. Artists got together and called themselves Trio, and it was Dolly Parton, Emmylou Harris, and Linda Ronstadt. They were gorgeous. Stupid, amazing sound. Yeah. I feel like these three could do it, and I will tell you, I saw this on Kelly Clarkson's, uh, one of her Christmas specials. Okay, so ding, 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 Kelly so Clarkson Kelly was Clarkson, the, one of the voices. Speaking of heard. American, I, we are all American Idol or The Voice. So far, you I are. am. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right, speak for myself. <laughs> uh, but Kelly Clarkson and her then mother-in-law, mm-hmm. Reba McIntyre whose voice, honestly, you probably could pick her out yep. in that. And Trisha Yearwood, who, when you think about it, has the same kind of voice that fits yeah. right in, yeah. plugs in. This is one of the most wonderful Stupidly astounding voices yes. from these this, women. And, and, and this is new. Like, this is in the last five or six years. Mm-hmm. And so that was also something that I liked, that it was a new rendition, but they kicked it, man. This is how you want to hear yep. this song. Well, opinion. and I noticed when I was, when I was looking this one up, um, Reba McIntyre just came out with a Christmas album album. I think this year, I think it's 2017, okay. um, and put this version on her Christmas album as well. Because it kicks so ass. So if it's brand new and you get that, you'll also yeah. hear this song. Yeah. Song. Okay, the next one is another song that everybody, everybody, everybody has done. Uh-huh. I'll Be Home for Christmas. It, do you know who they are? I have no idea who that is. They are a group of sisters, four sisters. This is the Forrester sisters who sang that version. Okay. They are a group of sisters who had a group in the 80s country, and they were uh-huh. on the country charts. If you were a country music fan back in the 80s, you know who the Forrester sisters were. Okay. Here's a little fun fact. They be my cousins. Really? What? Yeah, they don't know it. They have no idea. We've never met. And if you said my name, they would look at you and blink. They would have no idea. Okay. They don't sing together professionally anymore. Uh Um, And they've all grown up, have families and all of that. But the reason that I know who they are is that they they would go to – my mother would go to family reunions and they would be there. Uh And so, you know, she say, oh, the Forrester Sisters, they sing. When I worked in radio in the 80s, by golly, they had albums. Yeah. But not only that, they sound freaking ridiculous yeah, good. Yeah. They're like Andrew sisters. They're the old school female harmony mm-hmm. groups. I wonder sometimes when families come together and make music, if there is something genetic about the fact that totally. these voices just completely blend. Um, this There's a group that I'm thinking of that's not on my list this year. Maybe when we do this next year, they'll appear. The Roaches, mm-hmm. um, which is a terrible name for a group because it sounds like the it's, Roaches. It sounds um, like what it is. But, uh, but R-O-C-H-E-S. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, they're three sisters who just happen to have these perfectly placed, very deep contralto, you know, mezzo and then soprano voices. So they can do these amazing things, which is three, you know, voices in harmony. And there is something about, like, even though they're so wildly different in terms of range, they sound really beautiful together. And I I noticed the same thing listening to this. Well, you look at the Judds is another – I think genetics totally is a part of of how you can sound good together. The thing about this one also, aside from that family note and all of that, Mm -hmm. and that they do sound good, I love this song. Yeah. This is a song that you have to hear. And whether it's this version or another, this song has to be played – at Christmas. So two things I want to say. One, um, what I love about this version is actually the arrangement. The melody that you're used to is not necessarily the first note that you hear. 
when they sing it. Mm-hmm. So I was actually finding myself singing along to this song and, and feeling very proud of myself that I was harmonizing. And I was just singing the melody. I mean, I was singing the song that I knew, but all the harmonies are really prevalent in the way that this is done. So it's it's fun to sing along to. This is like one of the best to sing along to. Number two, about the song, again, this is another kind of sad Christmas tune, right? Because even though the lyrics say, I'll be home for Christmas, you can count on me. If, this comes from the war. But also it's, I'll be home for Christmas if only in my dreams. Yeah, that's the last yeah. lyric of the song, which kind of gives you this whoop, kind of no, maybe not. Mm-hmm. And this was popularized during World War II, where people were away from home and they would not be home for Christmas that year. Mm-hmm. You know, and so this was at a time, it's kind of in that same vein, not a Christmas song, but I'll be seeing you. Yes. You know, is one yes. of those things like, I will see you again, but you listen to the song, it's like, but will you really? Right. You know, or is that just a, a nice thing to say? And so this is another thing where I'll be home for Christmas is what you want to hear. Um, and the idea is that, you know, I'll be with you in my heart, but you're probably not going to see me for Christmas. Again, there is well, some sadness associated with this holiday. When, when everyone expects you to be happy, happy, happy all the time, and this jolliness is forced on you, I think listening to some sad songs every once in a while is a really healthy way to cope with all that stuff because no one's that 24-hour happy all the time, even in December. So I'm totally with you with the sad songs. I, I put a couple of them on my list as well. Well, I think there is a mel- melancholiness about it, exactly for the same reasons that you're saying, and I think that that's why there's so many, blame, many of them. Okay, let's move on to my last one in this block and you know maybe we'll pick up the pace but not with this song <laughs> although i love this oh this is a classic I i'm sorry love this this is yes. the carpenters and this is they did several but uh-huh. this is my favorite of theirs merry christmas darling we're apart that's true But I can dream, and in my dreams, I'm Christmasing with you. So again, it's with the melancholy. I get that. I get that I've got a theme going on, and I didn't mean to necessarily. These are just what popped up, so it's Uh just where I am right now. Well, and it's it's about missing somebody on Christmas, mm-hmm. but again, sending them a note saying, you know, I wish I was with mm-hmm. you. You know, it's mm-hmm. like you have some love in your life. It's just someone that you're, you know, it's not, it's not, they haven't broken up. They haven't, you know, it's not like I'll be home for Christmas where maybe they're going to get killed in the war. You know, it's just a, hey, you know, I listen to you and I, I love you and I'm, I'm thinking about you and. I'm now wondering whether I need to, to, to talk to somebody because I'm now looking at this going, what the hell was I thinking when I put this together? I mean, keep in mind, I love all these songs, but dear God, they're kind of, I mean, it's just, just sad. I think I pick up in the next time, though. I think you but do. But we've got I think yours you do. coming down, and you have some... You have some some fun ones. I've got some fun ones. So we're going to take a short break. When we come back, uh, we're going to do my first block of five. You're listening to Pomperation with Eric and Stacy. Take a deep breath. This may sting a little. It's the most wonderful time of the year. With the kids jingle belling and everyone telling you be of good cheer. It's and we are back. Uh, this is Poperation. I'm Eric. I'm Stacy. And this is our ultimate holiday playlist it's 2017. It's the most wonderful time of the... I feel like I've sung that before. Probably. And, you know, this that song didn't make it on our it list. It did not. But it could, and maybe it will next year. Yeah, yeah. So my first one, kind of picking up this theme of... You know, a little sad. Um, this one, I'm surprised I like it. I am. I do like it. And I like this version a lot. But it kind of, it, it thinking about it, I don't know why this song just grabs me the way it does, but it does. Uh, let's take a listen. Every man would have a friend That right would always win And love would never This is my I love this song, and I, I there are, there are quite a few people have covered this song. Mm-hmm. Buble has just the most luscious 
voice. Yeah. So this was Michael Bublé singing Grown Up Christmas List. And like Clay Aiken was singing to Mary, uh, Michael is singing to Santa Claus um, in this one. But kind of the spirit yeah, of Santa Claus. It's just the same, Eric. <laughs> I wish you could see the sarcasm on my face. <laughs> but, you know, it's an adult singing to a, Correct. you know, a, and but but the spirit of Santa Claus, the spirit of Christmas, if you yes. will. The idea that when I was a kid, I sat upon your knee and, and thought about, you know, what I wanted. Now I look at the world around me and here's what I'd really like. And, and when you think about it, it's kind of, here we go. You know, it's like the world is in a mess. And, you know, and I, I wonder if in 2017 it's going to be especially resonant to me <laughs> to hear Michael Bublé talk about what's on his grown up Christmas list, which is a world that can get along and just be civil to one another. Um, but I, you know, it, it, it gets a little, a tiny bit, not, not too much, a tiny little bit political um, about just kind of a comment on our society, not on politics per se, mm-hmm. but just on the way that we treat each other and just kind of saying, you know, it's Christmas time. We talk about, you know, peace on earth. So it's not political per se. It's just more about, you know, how we treat each other as people. But I wonder if in 2017, you know, this is going to be especially resonant to me. Uh, just thinking about what's on Buble's grown-up Christmas list and what's on mine, too, and just people that can just talk to each other and see each other as human beings and, and, you know, why can't we all just get along? Well, that may be part of why, you know, I was mentioning about my the melancholy of my first block. Mm-hmm. That may be part of it. It's just where I am, picking what I am right this second, yeah. as yeah. opposed to in the past, it would be a different list. But we're going to pick things up. Thankfully. Okay, so here we go. One, this can, is, I, can I make a comment right sure. here? Sure. No Christmas music list should be without some song by this group. Yes. And I love this one because there's no lyrics and it's just really all about their amazing voices. And we're talking about Pentatonix. Let's listen. So that was Pentatonix doing their version of Tchaikovsky's The Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy. I will say, get their Christmas. They may even have two albums, but if yeah. they have at least one, yeah. get it. Yeah. Get it, get it, get so it. So much fun. So much fun. I actually have a couple of acapella groups mm-hmm. on my list. Um, there's something about just voices blending together and that being all you get. Now, obviously, Pentatonix does their vocal percussion thing as well, uh, and, and it's produced. They do it in a studio, and people mix it up very nicely. They probably don't sound that way on the street corner, although close oh, I bet because they're, close. they're really really, really mm-hmm. good. These, these, these five voices are tight. And, you know, the Nutcracker. That is Christmas. That is it classic is. Christmas. So it's nice to have a modernized kind of version yeah. of it for that. So I, I think this is perfect. Yeah, this hits me on two levels. This hits me on, it's the Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy, which just sounds like Christmas. My sister uh, did ballet when she was a young mm-hmm. child. And so I found myself a lot of Christmases going to a theater to watch my little big sister play a snowflake. That was my, yes, that was my tradition is that we went to see the Nutcracker uh almost every year. Yeah. And my children have seen it several. I mean, that it is, Christmas. And as I said, I just think this is a fun version. I love I love them. Yeah, because the other thing that where it hits me is it, it hits me in terms of, okay, it's Tchaikovsky, it's in the cracker, it's Christmas. And then also I just listen to it with my mouth agape going, these five people are doing all of this with their voices. I do that with every time I, I listen to them. Yes. I do that. Every single song makes me go, what? Yeah, they're crazy talented and it's fun in that way. Um my next song comes from an album that I wore out <laughs> in my my youth. I think I was a junior in high school when this came out. And it was a um, an album that was released to raise money for HIV AIDS research. And a bunch of pop stars got together and all put in a Christmas song to a, a – compilation called A Very Special Christmas. Mm -hmm. And there has since been volume two, volume three. I think we're up to like volume 1709, something like that. Um, But it's a, what a great idea, right? I mean, in terms of Mm -hmm. just, you know, here, we only want you to do one song. It's for charity. Um, People from Madonna to uh, trying to think who else is that Sting, Stevie Nicks. You know, I mean, it was a really great group of This was a time of Live Aid and Band-Aids. Yep. 
where that was the thing. That's yep. what was going on. And this one, this was huge. This yes. was a huge, and now it's a classic. Yeah. You hear this one right along with my Mariah Carey. Yep. And I could have picked five or six songs from this album to be on my ultimate list. I chose two this year. Um, two more will reappear next year. But this first one is U2 singing Christmas, Baby, Please Come Home. It was so cool and cutting edge, and it was Bono being yeah. Bono. And he is just being Bono. I mean, he's sing- this is a rock song. You but know, now, it's- now it's a classic. Yeah. He may hate that, but it's a classic. Yeah. Right up there with Andy Williams and Perry Como. <laughs> bitch. Sorry. Sorry, Bono. Well, you know, we've all got a little bit older, but it is. It's Bono being Bono, and it's, it's U2 being U2. And that's the other thing that I loved about this album is that with a couple of exceptions, you know, most people just kind of – treated this, they covered the song as themselves and brought complete new life to whatever it was that they were singing. Now, again, you listen to the lyrics. He's lonely. Baby, please come home. Yeah, we it's still better without you. Clearly we have a theme. But the kind of yearning that's expressed here doesn't make you all sad. It's like, come on, baby, come on home. I mean, you know, it's a rock song. So it's just, it's it's really, and really it's fun. Bono. Yeah. Yeah. And it's sexy. I mean, you know, because it's Bono and he's sexy. Um Continuing on with the the sadness theme and bringing it down a little bit. Sorry, we had a little glimpse of of you know. Please be fun drinking while you're light. listening to this. Please uh, be drinking. But this or is maybe a song. Shouldn't. Okay, so this next song is not really. It's funny because Apple Music did put it on one of their ultimate Christmas playlists, and I was like, really? Because I thought I was the only one that really thought about this as a Christmas song. Uh, this is a song uh, from 1984, The Pretenders. It's called Two Thousand Miles. Now, the lyrics mention Christmas. This is an original song. Correct. Um, and it wasn't necessarily marketed as a Christmas tune no. so much. And yet, it you know, it really is all about, you know, you said you'd be home by Christmas. And it's just a, another my love is far away kind of a thing, which I guess, you know, Christmas being what it is, again, it's that idea that you're supposed to be happy, 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 happy. And if you are in a place in your life where you're separated from the one that you love, it's hard to be super, super happy all the time. Tell you, there's there's a reason why there's so many of these songs written. Yeah, yeah. Because there's a lot of it going on. Yeah. So, but what I love about this, again, this is just, you know, I, I, I put it right after you 2 because if we, this is the rock and roll section of what I'm doing. You know, there's guitars playing. It's Chrissy Hind, who's got one of the most iconic oh rock voices ever. Now, if you want something that sounds a little bit more poppy, you know who covered this song recently? It was Kylie Minogue. Shut up. Yes. And it, it actually, I like her version a lot. Really? I do. I like her version a lot. But I put this one on here because this is kind of the classic. But those are two different voices. Completely yeah. different voices. So it shows the song is really strong, right? Yeah. I mean, it holds up to, and Kylie does not try to do it like Chrissy Hines. She sounds like Kylie really? Minogue. But it also does a, a great version. But for this, for this, I wanted to kind of stick to the classic. Uh, Chrissy, to me, is very much like Karen Carpenter. There is that voice in uh-huh. there that just comes out and kind of grabs your heart. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it may, it, and there's a melancholy to it. Even if they're singing a happy song, yep. there's a melancholy. There's something that just reaches, and Chrissy's voice does that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so that was one for me. And then the last song in my first group of five. Um, is a song that was written, this is actually a cover, because it was written, and, and the, the song was written recently, um, and put out there by Sarah Bareilles. Oh, yeah. And Sarah Bareilles, uh, I'm a big Broadway person, so she's kind of well-known to the Broadway folks as the, the person who wrote all the music and lyrics for Waitress, mm-hmm. the musical, but she's been, um, she was on, uh, she was a judge on that kind of acapella 
reality show. Wait, but before that, she had some hits. Yeah. She had some top 40 stuff. Yeah, no, she did. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, Brave was mm-hmm. a song yeah, of hers yeah. that I really enjoyed. Yeah. And yeah, there's she's, she's a great songwriter and, and singer. There's a video of her on a piano, playing a piano, going through the streets. I don't know which song that was. But it was mm. that was the video. Was okay, her, her being driven away on on like a yeah. truck or something going around. The yeah, streets. she's great. So, so I mentioned, you know, I've mentioned a couple times on the show when I'm in a group full of gay men. Sometimes I say, "Who's your diva?" My friend Kyle, his diva is Sarah Bareilles, mm-hmm. which I kind of went diva, really. But to him, she's like the end. So anyway, she she wrote this song called Winter Song. I've done a, I, I've included a cover version of that song because the song is beautiful, but this voice, oh my gosh. Yes. This is amazing. This is my winter song to you. The storm is coming soon. It rolls in from the sea. My voice will begin in the night. My words will be a light to carry you to me. Beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. So you have to kind of, if you're, if you're, again, if you follow Broadway, you know who this is. This is Leslie Odom Jr., um, who made a big splash in Hamilton. So he was part of the original cast of Hamilton, and he came out with a Christmas album last year. And this was, and a lot of, like most of the Christmas albums that come out from pop stars, it's mostly kind of traditional songs you've heard before, and then a couple of interesting choices. So this was one of his interesting choices, but as soon as I heard it, I was already familiar with the Sarah Bareilles version. I thought it was so cool that he was covering that. Again, kind of like the Kylie Pretenders thing, it really shows that this is beyond Sarah Bareilles just being an artist who knows how to write for herself. She also knows how to write really good songs that can handle the these kinds of interpretations. And when he sings this, this is my probably, you know, sit on the, the couch and drink my cocoa and happy cry. Um, but it's not, and the lyrics are a little opaque. They're not, you know, it, but it, it does kind of have this, this notion to it. We have a theme. I mean, so far we do have a theme. Going yeah. On. Yeah. And I, you know, again, maybe it's just like, maybe that's why we're calling this the ultimate holiday playlist 2017. Cause you know, maybe this Next is the year, year it's time to, yeah, it, it very well might be. Let's hope. Right. Um, but you know, but I, I, again, I go back to, I, I, it's easy to make fun of ourselves and to kind of laugh at what we've done. But I do, I'll say it again, you know, when, when the world wants you to be happy all the time, this is sometimes the best remedy for that. So uh, another remedy is to go to classics, like yep. classic classics. Yep. And the first one in my next block is that, Is a song that would have been on my list had you not put it on. Well, it. We, yep. we did that to each other. When we picked out our list, I realized that he had, that Eric had picked some that I would have put on there and vice versa. Of a white Christmas Just like the ones I used to know The tree okay, do I need to say what it is? Do I need to say who it is? No. Do I need to say where it's from? Do no. I need to say anything about that Nothing song? About that. Except it better be on your damn playlist. <laughs> but I do believe that it is the top selling. You were talking about Mariah Carey at yeah. one point. I think it's the biggest selling. I think when you it had like fifty years on her. Yes, but I and I but I think I think you have to uh put Adjust. its original sales in today's dollars. In order for oh, no, it no, to, no, for sure you yes. do. No, for sure um, you do. You know, and so it, th- this is the biggest kind of Christmas hit of all time. Um, one thing that you you might assume that this comes from Irving Berlin's White Christmas. It actually, you would be wrong. You'd be wrong. So Holiday Inn, which until I got a little bit more woke than I was, was one of my favorite Christmas. And, and there are parts of it that are still my favorite. Just Christmas. skip Lincoln's birthday, and you're fine. You're not fine because his <laughs> cook. You're not fine. It's awful in so many ways. But it's good in some ways as well. Holiday Inn, black and white, Fred Astaire, Bing Crosby. Basically, this guy, quit. he's a show business guy, Bing Crosby is. He quits because it's so much. They have to do two shows on holidays. So he decides, I'm going to have uh, an inn where... People drive we're, all the way out to the fucking right. mountains. Right. But it's, we're only open on holidays. So 10 or 12 days a year is all we're open. 
And so every show would be. Did he just have a shit ton of money? Did that, did that ever get like set up as like how he could afford to buy an mm, inn no, and keep it open it twelve like, days out of the year? Dude, it was like nineteen. 19- 40, I know. 41. Hi, I'm Eric. I overthink things. Yeah, Whatever. you're really going in a place you don't need to go. <laughs> so also, but here's another fun fact. Mm-hmm. This is where the Holiday Inn got their brand name. Yep. Just so you know. Yep. Um, anyway, so Although that's... they're open on more than so just So from Holiday Inn, we have White Christmas, mm-hmm. but we also have the Easter song easter Mm -hmm. bonnet with frills upon it yep and that was made into easter parade easter parade so so fred astaire got a movie out of it bing crosby got another movie out of it correct yep so anyway this was such a huge hit white christmas was such a huge huge hit Mm -hmm. again the war had just started and there is so but it goes through all the holidays that in 1941 Mm -hmm. were holidays uh one of them was thanksgiving they also did Valentine's Day. Unfortunately, yep. they did Lincoln's birthday and just <laughs> did the opposite of what you should do for Lincoln's birthday. Uh, oh. But, um, you know, it, what was funny about the Thanksgiving one, just a little side. Yeah. So this might get cut. This little side is that they have animation. It's a calendar and it's the turkey going from one Thursday to the next because the turkey didn't know which day was Thanksgiving. Uh-huh. And you're like, well, what do you mean? It's always the fourth Thursday. That is relatively new. Really? At one point, Thanksgiving was a, was not necessarily the fourth Thursday. Sometimes it would be the third. Sometimes it would be the fourth. Oh. And so that's why it's a joke in Holiday Inn when you see the animation of the turkey on a calendar. And we don't Trying to figure it out. Only really old people get it. Okay. But the fun, just a little fun fact. Um, anyway, this is classic. That's all I need to say about it. Yeah. It's it's they made a movie of it. That's yep. go see that if you want to see a movie with a song mm-hmm. in it. Otherwise, just listen to it. Everybody's done a version of it. It's yeah. lovely to sing along. Sometimes they do the little prologue, and sometimes they don't, which is all about being in Beverly Hills, and and then it goes into I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Yeah, I don't like that because that wasn't in the movie. Yeah. So I I'm a little bit and of a he purist. was and Holiday Inn was like in the mountains of what Connecticut or something correct something like that um, but yeah when the Carpenters do this song they 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 put in the the little prologue and so it's does all Bette about, Midler yeah um, which is it's fine it you know to me the the idea is that uh, you want to have that snowbound picturesque this northern is, United States kind so of Christmas experience speaking of we were talking about the melancholiness yep. honestly. This was in the movie Holiday mm-hmm. Inn. Bing writes this song because he is alone. It is sung again with the idea that this may not be what we have. Mm-hmm. This may not be reality, yep. but it's what we wish it were be yep. would be. So there is still that melancholy. We've still got that theme going on. The next one. Okay, I I included this next one, even though it's a little rapey. People call it rapey. <laughs> But I want to say here, when I listen to it, I've decided that everybody's consensual. Okay. All right? That's how I go into it. That's how I deal with it. Lots and lots of versions of this one. Yes. I really can't stay. Baby, it's cold outside. I gotta go But away. baby, it's cold outside. This evening has been, been over and at you drop so in. very nice. I'll hold your hand. Just like My mother I will start to beautiful. Begin. What's your and father will be pacing the floor now? I bet you recognized one of those people, the guy. I I'm gonna guess that that was Dean Martin. It was Dean Martin. Okay, but this is a relatively new version. See? Yeah, because so, I'm familiar with a version that he used to do where the the girls part was just sung by this trio of breathy backup singers. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't Dean Martin and anybody. Because my first time, I'm like, "Baby, it's cold outside." By Dean Martin, I'm mm-hmm. like, "Well, who's he singing with?" This is Correct. a duet, and then it was like these backup singers that barely added anything. So and keep like, in mind, mm-hmm. there are so many good versions of this. Yeah, so many. Uh-huh. I like this one because it is Dean Martin and it's new. Martina McBride. 
She did really? that whole thing. You remember how uh, Natalie Cole did that song, with Unforgettable, with her dad? Yep. This is what Martina did with Dean Barnes. She took that version that you're talking about uh-huh. and separated the tracks and put in her own track. And I just think it's lovely. I think it's very nice. I love Dean Martin, and mm-hmm. I feel like there should be a Dean Martin song on my list. Okay. And this is the one I chose. Again, I choose to believe that everything's consensual and nothing non-consensual happens during this episode. <laughs> She's just leading him on. She's 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 playing flirting. hard to get. She's, she's flirting. flirting. And her body language, which you can't see, is telling him that she's really... She hasn't stood up from the couch. She's still on his lap. She's kissing his ear. <laughs> saying, but mama would be, you yeah. know, she's... This is... this. That's how I choose. Okay. Okay. And... I apologize to those of you who just absolutely hate it, but I, I feel like when I first listened to it, it felt like it was yep. flirting. Mm-hmm. I I see now the uh, the triggers, yes. but that's not how I, I go on. So there song. is a version of this song, just as an FYI, that kind of solves that a little bit, uh, which is uh, recently a, a Broadway Christmas album came out. Um, and a lot of times they'll do this thing where the casts of whatever Broadway shows are up right now will kind of get together and do a Christmas carol. Um uh, and but there was one year where they just had Broadway stars just kind of come on and just do a thing, and so Liza Minnelli and Alan Cumming oh, did wow. a version of "Baby It's Cold Outside," where halfway through the song he's just like, "Okay, well if you don't want to stay, bye." And she's like, "Well, wait a minute," and it kind of gets into that thing where they were flirting, right? Mm-hmm. And then he's like, "Nope, we're done. Get in your cab. It's all good." And so they switch parts. And she starts singing the guy's part to him, and he starts singing the girl's part back to her. And by the time the song is over, they're both pursuing each other, and they're both playing hard to get. It's a little bit easier to take if you get triggered by the rapey stuff. even if you switch them and have the male sing the female and all of that Uh and go with that way, it's even – it's probably even easier because you're – at that point, you're going – he's – you know, he's not worried about his parents or his brother. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And the power dynamic is different. Correct. You know, it's not – So I get that, but I do like this version, and so there you go. This next one, another modern classic. This one is, again, when I was, you know, at the folding tables – (laughs) <laughs> there in the mall, I was listening to this. This came up all the time, and now I can't have a Christmas without it. I agree. This is this is, and if this isn't, this is your other one. That if it hadn't been on your list, it would have been on mine. Peace, George Michael. This yeah. is this was this is to me. It's it's awesome. It's an awesome song. I can't. And when it comes on in the radio, I am singing along to it. Me too. And if me somebody's too. if I'm talking, you know, if I have the speaker phone on or whatever, it's like I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna call you back. Click because I gotta <laughs> sing the song. So I love. I I think it's it's great. Again, there's a melancholy. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's about a girl who done him wrong. I mean, it's again, there's but it's there's, hopeful. It says, yeah. you know, next year I'll be with somebody else, and I'll have left you behind, and you know, you, you're and a horrible person for breaking George Michael's heart, even though he was gay. So you know, but nobody knew, including him. So <laughs> I did hear a version of this song that I thought was passable, and it was only because it was in context. When I was still watching Glee, they did a holiday show where. Um, Leah Michelle sang the song to Finn, um, and it was it. Th- I, I liked it, but then when I heard the George Michael Wham version again, this is actually Wham. So he was still yes, with jo- Andrew Ridgely making music together when they did this, and it, it's just so much better. And it's just it belongs to the eighties. I mean, it really is this kind of it's of its time. And and if you're a kid of the eighties like I am, I'm right back in high school. Listen to Wham. No, this, this, you're exactly right on all of those points. And I think that there have been other people who have sung the song. Yeah. But this is the one that I think is the right one. Yep. And yeah, I said right. <laughs> so, so what's next? I'm continuing a little bit of this melancholy, this, you know, uh, wish I were with you or wish it were different or whatever. This is, and this is, this is so sentimental for me. Uh huh. This is Amy Grant. Uh huh. This is Tennessee Christmas. Well, they say in LA. But a tender Tennessee Christmas is the only Christmas. 
See, now, I don't really find that melancholy at all. I mean, what she's saying, the, the lyric that always kind of strikes me is, I know there's more snow up in Colorado, but this is where I want to be. And so she is home, right? I mean, isn't it from the point of view no, of, like, she, she's in Tennessee, and this is what she, this is how she celebrates Christmas, because this is home for her. Correct. That is true, but there is this whole, I mean, it, it, I don't know, it does come across as a little melancholy to me, yeah. just because it is... You know, there are other places I could be, but I do choose this one. It's sentimental. But I'm not. But here's the thing, and maybe this is why it's melancholy to me is that I I'm from Tennessee, just Uh an FYI to anybody, and so that's one reason that I like this song. But when I when when I hear it, I'm not there. Yeah. So that's the melancholy is that that's me thinking about that. Now, Uh having said that. I actually I'm I'm usually okay not being in Tennessee (laughs) at that time, but. I do want to say I, you know, I I do love being from there, and and this song is just very sentimental. Mm-hmm. It's very personal, and yep. I, and so had you heard of it before? I have, yeah, yeah, you yeah. have heard it. Okay, now Alabama has a version of it. They do fine, but they, you know, they're Alabama. That's that's fine. Uh-huh. But this is the original. Amy Grant wrote it. Yeah, and this is the one that I like. Uh-huh. I choose this. And when I was listening to, I wanted to listen to it again before we did the show, and I noticed again as I was, you know scrolling through my phone and Apple Music to try to find it, a whole lot of people have covered this recently. I mean, this is still a song that people want to do. I think anybody from the South who hears these lyrics just kind of thinks, yeah, you know, I mean, we didn't get 10 feet of snow because we're not in New Hampshire. Whereas, you know, Courier and Ives kind of did a number on the American culture that says when it's Christmas time, you have to be like covered in snow. Um, And most of the country is not. But this is where, again, this is my home. This is where I choose to be. It's also if you want to get, I mean, this is (laughs) profiling. It's a country. It's country music. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nashville is is country music USA, yep. and so if you're a country artist, this is a great Christmas song to add to your Christmas yeah. album yep. because Tennessee is country and the heart of that kind of music for the world. Yeah, and so I, you know, and 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 she she nailed it. But I I love her version, which isn't as country as it can be, mm-hmm. uh, but it's just it's just where I am. So yep. that's that's my big sentimental one. The next one is another classic. Total classic. Now it is it is so everybody. It's really interesting because this is written by Mel Torme, uh-huh. who also sings this song. Yeah, and he has and Mel has a creamy voice. Yes. Okay, but this is the classic. This is the one that should be on everybody's list as well. I put this, and I also said Bing Crosby's, mm-hmm. and everybody calls it the Christmas song, or they call it the chestnuts ro- roasting song. Yeah. But I think it's called the Christmas song. Yep. That's what it was named. That's what Mel called it. It's, it's, little, it's, little, you know, little, little proud of himself there when he wrote this. This is the <laughs> Christmas, Christmas song. song. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Jack Frost nipping at your nose Yuletide carols being sung by choir Yeah, nobody sings like him. Nobody. Oh my dear God. Nobody. Cream. Yes. Just, and here's, this is, this is what, and again, I'm not saying that he's, he's not very close, Mm -hmm. but this is what Buble aspires to. Yes. Okay. That yes. that voice there, mm-hmm. that cream, that rich, that just smooth, that just <gasps> that. I mean, when you listen to that song, mm-hmm. if you don't picture yourself on a couch you never had in front of a fireplace you've never had in a lodge you've never visited, then you're crazy because that's where it puts me. Yeah, I've never been there, but that's where I picture myself. Yeah, and the lyrics are, here are not saying you know this is what we're, it's saying. What is? It's just saying this is Christmas, mm-hmm. you know, and it's just like. And, and Merry Christmas to you is how it, it, it ends. It's just like all the wonderful things that we he love about this season. Every comfortable thing. Yeah. Every comfortable <laughs> thing. Merry Christmas. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing. And it's just, it, it does. It just, it makes me feel all warm and yes. fuzzy um, when I listen to it. And it is, it's a perfect way to, as we're getting close to the end yes. uh, of our, uh, our, our block here. we got some major classics coming next yes. in your block. Yes. So we are going to take a break. And when we, we come back, we're going to do my uh, kind of final, final um, block and then Stacy's last song and then my last song. And then we're going to call it a night. You're listening to Poparation with Eric and Stacy. Take a deep breath. This may sting a little. And we're back. This is 
Operation. I am Eric. I'm Stacy. And we're talking about our Christmas music list for 2017. And we're talking about classics. We talked about, you know, major, major classic stuff like White Christmas, like the Christmas song. And your, the start of your next block is, I think this is an awesome. This would have been a good one as your starting one. Could as well. have been. This could have been my starting song. Yeah. Um, but it's a little, and, and it's, and we're going to lighten the mood. Yeah, uh, here, which kind of as we, we need to. <laughs> we Says everybody who's still listening. Yeah. So my first song of this second block is Ella Fitzgerald, who, by the way, I think is the most underrated singer in the American recording industry. Okay, do you think she's underrated? Because people kind of rate her high. Yes, but but not high enough. I mean, that's the thing. She got a lot of praise, but she is, she is the, her voice is as clear as a bell. And I've said this about her before. Songwriters loved when Ella sang their songs because they always said, that's how I wrote it. That was always her. So she doesn't put so much of herself into it. She doesn't have the kind of voice you hear, oh, Judy Garland or Barbara Streisand or Chrissy Hind even, you know, or, um, you know, some of those folks or, or, you know, she doesn't have the kind of voice where you hear it and you're like, oh, that's Judy. Oh, that's Barbara. Mm -hmm. You know, even, oh, that's Dean Martin. You know, right. It, it, she serves the song. And that's, I think, what makes her so underrated. Because people love her, but at the same time, you know, I don't think that she gets near enough credit for being the artist that she is because okay. you really just hear the song. Fair enough. And this song deserves to be heard exactly the way it is because yep. it's just fun and light and it's Christmas and it's Santa Claus is coming to town. So you better watch out. You better not cry. Better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. He's making a list and checking it twice. Gonna find out who's naughty and nice. That is just a happy song. How fun is that? If you have to go shopping, and by I say, I say half because I don't like going (laughs) shopping and I sure as hell don't like the malls during Christmas season. Mm -hmm. But if you have to and you're driving and you're looking for the parking place because it's going to take you 30 minutes Uh at the mall, this is a song that would keep me lacking yes. road rage. Yes. So this entire album is great. It's called Ella Wishes You a Swingin' Christmas. And Ella Fitzgerald basically put out two major Christmas albums in her career. One was called Christmas, and it's almost entirely religious. And then one was called Ella Wishes You a Swingin' Christmas, and it was almost entirely this kind of jazzy kind of stuff, which I just This adore. is wonderful. I, I Seriously, I love this song, and yeah. I love her version of this yeah. song, because again, people, lots of people have done it, but she, this, this, she slams it. It's yeah. awesome. So my next pick uh, was a, a song that was actually made famous back in the 50s by K Star. Yeah, I, now Here's the thing. I, I I know who she is, but I know who she is because my parents loved her. Uh-huh. So this is not going to be a name that people are going to know yeah. necessarily. Yeah. Now, this is a cover version. And she has a good song. version. Yes. Okay. K-Star's version is great. It really is. But I wanted to do one song by this artist because I just adore her music. Leah Delaria is probably best known to most folks for playing Big Boo on Orange is the New Black. Big, butch, lesbian with tattoos and a funky haircut, right? And she's been uh, in the the LGBT world a a really famous stand-up comic for a really long time. And then she came out with this jazz album out of nowhere and did a bunch of songs that we know but in this very jazz combo kind of version. And she usually plays with an upright bass, a piano, and a set of drums, and that's it. And she has got this voice that is just her pitch is just right Let's on. listen to this. It's fun. This is this is uh, everybody's waiting for the man with the bag by Leah Delaria. Old Mr. Kringle is soon gonna jingle the bells that'll tinkle all your troubles away. Everybody's waiting for the man with a bag. Christmas is coming again. He's got a sleigh full that's not gonna stay full. He's got stuff to drop at every stop. First of all, it goes with me. It's another one of those that you're sitting there looking for a parking space in the mall, parking lot. <laughs> this is another one that you're fine. You're yep. you're, you're okay because it's almost like I don't want to find a parking lot spot until this song's over. Exactly. Fun. 
Yep. Really, really fun. But so, she sounds very nice. That's just that is that's a, that's cool. That's a yeah. very cool yeah. rendition. Uh huh. And and she her voice is like that all the time. And I first heard uh, the first time I ever heard her sing a Christmas song. She also has a great version of Sleigh Ride. Okay. By the way, which again done in that very kind of jazz combo dun 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 kind of thing. Um, her entire album is called Be a Santa. Um, and it's really, really, really cool. super fun. So if you like jazz and you if you like these Christmas tunes, but you just want to hear them in a slightly different way, her instrument is perfection. And when you see her perform, YouTube her. You know, if you YouTube yes. Leah Delaria and watch, you don't expect that voice <laughs> to come out of that visual necessarily. Um, but she is just delightful and her stand-up comedy was always rude as hell but funny 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 and then sometimes she would do a stand-up show and just bring this jazz combo with her and all of a sudden just kind of jump into a song and it's just like you're back in the 40s fun listening to this stuff um really really great unusual takes on things yes my next tune and yes if you hadn't had it on here it was going to be on this was going to this was destined to be on this list no matter what yes exactly i got there first i'm not even going to introduce it i just want people to hear it on the 11th day of christmas my true love came to me 11 pipers piping 10 loads of leaping 9 ladies dancing 8 maids and milking 7 swans of swimming 6 geese are laying 5 golden rings 4 calling birds 3 french hens 2 turtle doves and Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer on the twelfth day of Christmas, my I have a little dreidel. I made it out of clay. Okay, and you don't even get how crazy that was because you haven't heard the whole no, thing. No, that's the thing is you need to listen to the whole thing. Now, it, they also have a Christmas album. Yes, as well. several, I think. Yeah, you know, yes. at least two. Straight No Chaser. Yes, bunch of guys who met in college mm-hmm. who I actually saw live. I have um, too. I've yes, seen them twice. And they're very fun. Yeah. Um, and they are this. Um, so again, this is my second acapella group. Yeah. Uh, in in the the thing. So these guys make make this music with their voices and nothing else, which is kind of amazing, especially given the fact that they sing about nineteen different songs in this version of the of 12, twelve Days, days of, of Christmas. Christmas. Yes, and and that's what's fun about them that it's not just your regular twelve days of Christmas. Yeah. They go off on well, it's kind of like Eric and I. They go off down rabbit holes, little weird <laughs> tangents. There's a, there's some Hanukkah songs in this yeah. people I, it's, and it's, then toto africa is exa- in the middle of oh this. my god i forgot that's right and then the the russian thing dun dun dun, yes. dun 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 that's in there too they hit everything and but it's it's so fun youtube is also if you see this on youtube i don't know yeah. if it's on youtube but or if you can see them live see them live yeah but they are this is an hysterical rendition of 12 days of christmas and i think that that song needed to be included but this is the best yes. version. Well, the 12 Days of Christmas is done in its traditional way. Unless you're listening to Burl Ives. And oh, just, or singing you know, along. Or singing along. It's just, I mean, it's by its nature, it's, it's just so repetitive. Mm. This just puts it all in a blender yep. with everything else that, you know, either belongs or doesn't belong in the Christmas season. And it comes out. What I love about it is that you're right. It goes down a million rabbit holes. But obviously... With this many voices working together in tandem, completely planned, I have no idea how long it took them to rehearse oh, this thing. No, so that they, we come out as perfect as it does every single time. It is it, – the timing is wonderful. They they have the the mindset – it's a 21st century mindset yes. on a 20th century – song, yep. which a lot of the versions that we've talked about are, are kind of like that, but it's their take on this, and they made it palatable for our short attention spans, Yeah, and it is absolutely enjoyable, and... Because and they actually sing the first day of Christmas, Partridge in a Pear Tree, mm-hmm. they sing the second day of Christmas, and mm-hmm. then the very next time they sing, it's the fourth day of Christmas. Correct, and they they actually refer to it, I mean, it's... it's they and then are, it's the eighth, and then it's the eleventh, They and, are aware of themselves. Yes. It is. This is kind of a tongue-in-cheek, uh-huh. it's Certainly, they are in on the joke. Yes, and they and they know that you are, and it's it's just fun. It's just a fun one. It's yeah. just very very fun. And it just it it never stops amusing me when I, I hear I, it I year after year after year. I mean, it's been out for a couple of years now. Yep, I totally agree. more than a couple. Yep, and I I chuckle every single time. Yeah, it's it's just funny. it's delightful. Um, hard right turn into the techno pop eighties. Are you ready? I was going to say we were talking about the eighties. There were some classics that we talked about. Wham. Mm-hmm. We talked yep. about Mariah Carey. I mean, there are these things that are very much of their time, but at the same time 
I would say this is a classic too. Yeah, yeah. The the song is certainly a classic. The, the, the song, song is, a is is Winter Wonderland. Mm-hmm. So you have to have a version of that in the, in this. But I love this ver- this is this may be my favorite version. So this again comes from that album, A Very Special Christmas. Mm-hmm. And the the folks who who put in Winter Wonderland as their contribution to this very first outing were Annie Lennox and Dave Stewart, the Eurythmics. voice yes that i absolutely oh, love oh god and yes again, <laughs> you know again it goes to me it goes to chrissy hines it goes with uh, um trisha yearwood mm-hmm. and uh the car karen carpenter yep. there is something I, I just love her voice and yes. so but their take on this is different this is not your everyday winter one no, when it's no. it's got a little bit of a weird syncopation thing happening yeah. dave stewart put his mark on it yeah and and it's it's all done with you know electronic keyboards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's nothing the about this that sounds quote unquote traditional. It was definitely here's the Eurythmics spin on Correct. this thing. But it over time, it, it's it's amazing to me how well this has aged. Yes, people thought that the stuff in the '80s was just bubble gum and it would go away. Yeah. But it's amazing how many of those things we're still listening to, yeah. not just Christmas. Yeah. But that that they have aged better than people thought they would. But I think you're right in that the one of the reasons why it's aged well is that over this techno pop kind of landscape, then you have this amazing classic voice that Dear just God. you know so deep and resonant yep. and warm. It's like a velvet blanket. I'm telling you, this it voice. reaches out and grabs yep. you from from whatever you're listening to it on. I, yeah. I just think it's wonderful. Yeah, and and you know, this is a again, it's a piece of nostalgia. You know, because it's the 1940s and it's got that kind of uh you know the lyrics have that that sense to them Mm -hmm. you know oh you know we'll be in the snowman and we'll pretend it's a preacher and there is that idea that they're in on the joke yeah that they're being that kind of 80s irreverence Mm -hmm. kind of thing you're exactly right yeah um and then just putting a completely different spin on it okay this last song i almost i I almost disagreed with you a lot on this one (laughs) I will be honest with you. I almost said no. Okay, so you put the date rape song in. I can put the song in where the girl calls the guy a faggot. I can't. I changed my mind, though, um, as I listened. Because when I first made it, the beginning of it, I was like, oh, hell no. This is going to make me slip my wrist. (laughs) See, I think it's hilarious. But then it it picks up, and I'm like, oh, okay, this is fine. Yeah. So you got to get through the first part that I just went... Has he lost his damn mind? <laughs> okay, it's a three-minute song. It's not like you have to get to episode four of Stranger <laughs> Things before it picks up. Um, you know, it's it's a short little song. But it's, this is a song called Fairy Tale of New York, and it's by an Irish band called The Pogues, featuring guest vocalist Kirsty McCall, R.I.P. She she left us oh, way too, too soon. Sinatra was swinging, all the drunk play were singing. We kissed on the corner, then danced through the night. The boys of the envelope that's not the depressing part okay and and (laughs) yeah we didn't hear the the beginning the beginning sounds like an irish pub song it sounds like a drunk guy in an irish bar you know kind of singing his way and he doesn't have the most beautiful voice you've ever heard but to me that's it, it it's setting up a joke right and this is a song about the most dysfunctional relationship between you know Two people who were probably drug addicts, you know, alcoholics, um, they are fighting. They they love each other, but they hate each other. And it just happens to be on Christmas that one of them got thrown into the drunk tank and the other one had to go bail them out. Um, and it's just – it came out in the 80s. Mm-hmm. Um, it does take me back to that high school thing. <laughs> when I was a kid in high school, I thought this song was the most hilarious thing I'd ever heard in my life. As an adult, it's got its problematic moment towards the end when her classic line, you scumbag, you maggot, you cheap, lousy faggot. And I'm like, that's not – that shouldn't be funny. And yet it's done with this spirit of irreverence. I, I It's have, also in Ireland. Yeah. There's no – well, Kirsty McCall was not – No, and I it, mean they're Irish. It's an Irish – It's an Irish band. It feels band. very Irish. Yeah, it's an it's Irish just, band, but of course it's called Fairy Tale of New York. So I, I get that, but the song feels Irish to me. Absolutely. It feels like a big band that would be in the corner of an Irish pub, 
you know, singing yes. Irish ballads yes. and then they come out with this thing. Um, and it just, you know, it, it, there's a little bit of nostalgia there. It takes me back, it but it's also, Christmas too, you well, guys, Eric. <laughs> but I listen to it at this time of year. Every now this was, <laughs> you might not know this, but if you are if you're, if you're familiar with a little film that, that is called love, actually, you're aware that in the UK, like whoever has the number one song on Christmas Day, that's like a thing. Oh, I didn't. And like people are kind of like, who's going to be number one on Christmas Day this year? Mm-hmm. And so when I was living in the UK, I was a Navy brat, so I was stationed in Scotland. This song was number one on Christmas ah. Day. Um, and so, and, and it was, you know, it, it's kind of framed as a Christmas song. The opening lyric is, it was Christmas Eve, babe. In the drunk tank. That was, that's the opening lyric of this song, and that's the depressing part uh, that Stacey was talking about. But again, you look at the words, and I'm a words person. I am. I listen to lyrics. They, they hit me first, actually, before the music sometimes. And it just was so funny. Um, and there was something about being a rebellious teenager, and this was going to be the Christmas song I was going to listen to because I'm a, sure, sure. you know. And, and that, it, it has all kinds of, you know, connotations for me in that regard. As well, so Happy so it it, it ends my second block, but it's not my final final song. We're going to do our final songs now. now. <laughs> so Stacy's going to do uh, her final, and then I'm, I'm going to wrap up. The show. So I uh, one of my there are some classics that I absolutely love, and one of the songs, and it's this, this one is a um, uh, instrumental, and I love very very many versions of this. Mm-hmm. It's the Carol of the Bells. Yep. I love very – I just love it. I love it when the bells at uh, – you know, if, if you go to see a, if a church or somebody uh-huh. has bell choir, yep. I love it when they do it. This song, it, I just, it's just, just beautiful. Yeah. Now, we have heard a snippet of this already in the Straight No Chaser version of 12 Days of Christmas. Correct. But <laughs> – but now we get to hear the whole thing. The whole thing is is, is in, but this version is just a fun version to me, and it's because it's the Russians, it's the Trans Siberian Orchestra. I almost called them an army. They're not, not yet, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> I find it's it's you know it has your Carol of the Bells, which is very lovely uh-huh. and very tinkly and all of that, and then it gets you know it, all of the orchestra joins in and it's da da da, and I yeah. feel like I can go and take on the world. It's very epic, you know. It's epic, got this that's very a great word epic for it. kind of sound yes, to it's it. An epic one, and, I and the other the other five dollar word I'm going to pull out to describe this song mm-hmm. is it's ubiquitous. <gasps> I mean it's. Everywhere, it is everywhere when you I when you it. you know and and I like it. It's when I saw it, I was kind of like, "Wow, okay, Carol of the Bells." But when I listened to it again, I was like, "Yeah, it's fun. It's well, fun. Love, There's a reason why it's everywhere." There's it was, a, I will say I will say this: almost every Christmas music list for me is going to have a version of Carol of the Bells because okay. I absolutely I, I just I don't know what it is about it, but I love it, uh-huh. love it, love it, love it. This version is fun, and also I was looking, going, "I've got to pick up the pace." As it is, it does. It gets to where it is very. It's it's a very happy and it's very, you know, includes all of the instruments, yep. not just the bells. Let's all do this. Let's get the oh. cello and the timpanis in there. Damn boom, boom, straight. boom, 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 boom. Yeah. As I said, it's epic. That's actually the best word for it. And that's, and that, that to me is how you, you know, one of the finishing things of okay. the Christmas. And it does. It finishes the Christmas portion because your last one for our playlist. Again, I go to the lyrics, right? So it yep. made sense to me to end yes. the, the holiday playlist with a song about New Year's. Speaking of voices. Yes. So this is Bette Midler singing What Are You Doing New Year's Eve. Maybe it's much too early in the game oh, But I thought I just the same What are you doing New Year's New Now again, we've kind of returned to the Judy Garland feel that we started with, but this song is essentially, again, talk, you know, I'm, I think about the words, she's just asking somebody out on a date. Mm-hmm. You know, it's what it is. She's asking somebody yes. out on a date, uh, hoping that they'll say yes and that they'll, you know, kiss each other at midnight uh, when the New Year, you know, turns over. And New Year's is one of those holidays that I think just gets overlooked because it's so close to Christmas. We don't have that many traditions around it, which is probably one of the reasons why 
Thanksgiving and New Year's are actually my favorite holidays of the quote unquote holiday season Mm -hmm. because they're not hyped up. And they just happen on one day. We don't have a season that surrounds them that kind of, you know. Um, But this is just a little bit of romantic longing. And if you've ever had a crush on someone, it takes you right to that kind of place. And again, as you say, Bette Midler. I mean, a million people have recorded this song as well. Dean Martin does a lovely version of this song. Um, I like hearing a woman do it because it just kind of flips the script a little bit. And I just love, I love hearing Bette Midler sing anything. You're exactly right. It does kind of go back to that Judy Garland kind of, we're singing this song and it it does have a melancholy feel to it, but it's not, it's just really slow. I mean, it's a slow song. It's not a melancholy song, but. But the emotion that it really dredges up is kind of nervousness. Like I like you and I want to spend New Year's Eve with you. And again, yeah. It is Bette Midler who has one of those voices that reaches out, especially on certain songs. I put mm-hmm. it on this one, and I think she does a beautiful job. I love her version of yep. this. I think this is this is perfect. And you really have kind of gone full circle. Yep. And you've gone from the beginning of the Christmas season, and now Christmas is over, so it's time to start. What What's next? Yep. And maybe it's us. You know, maybe that's how this is. It's like maybe we you know maybe uh, next year's a year is us. And you know, there's there's something about New Year's. I mean, the one kind of tradition that we we do kind of hold on to is this idea of New Year's resolutions, right? Mm-hmm. And just kind of saying, you know what, next year is going to be like this. It's a very hopeful, very hopeful. thing to watch yes. the clock turn, yes. and all of a sudden the numbers change. And you know what? Pretty soon, kids, 2017 is going to be in the history books. Correct. And 2018 might be different. And we have no idea what is out there. So there is always an optimism. There's always a hope. And I think that that's what this this song kind of denotes. And so, yeah, I think that's a great way is is to to start the the new year. Yeah. So again, folks, this playlist is going to be available to you yep. in all kinds of places. Go mm-hmm. check out the blog. Come to www.poperationroom.com. Mm-hmm. Connect to our blog and we'll have a bunch of links for you. So yep. whether you want to get your music on Spotify or Apple or you Google, too. we're going to have a whole bunch of places uh, where you can find this. Uh, if you want to use this as your holiday music playlist for flattered. commuting or, you know, just cooking your Christmas turkey or whatever you want to do. Um, I think we did a great job, actually. It's a, it's a, it's a little on the, you know, it's a little on the melancholy side, but that's, you know, it's a lovely, (laughs) it's a lovely, but it's, it's lovely music and it's fun. And then in the middle of the whole thing, you get, you know, a bunch of guys singing Africa by Toto because why not? Because happy holidays. You've been listening to Poperation with Eric and Stacy. Check out our website at operationroom.com for links to our blog and other extras. Don't forget to subscribe to Poperation via iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, and other podcast locations. You can also follow at Poperation Room on Facebook and Twitter. Music provided by purpleplanet.com.